Hey, good morning, everybody. This is Sports Talk News. I'm Joe Bork, and this is going to be a quick recap of last night's game. As later tonight, I will be doing the preview to the game this evening. But last night's game against the Ryan Warriors that I was on at Sly Fox Tavern was a really fun setting, great place up there at Sly Fox with Eric Jesperger. It was a weird game to judge because the Royals you typically do not have offline changes, which they had at least twice in that game. And typically do not have off net front defense, which they had pretty much that entire game. So, that's typically characteristics of other teams around the league that we talk about and not our very own Reading Royals. So, <clears throat> I think this was an out of character game for the Royals. They played solid in the first 10 minutes of the first. Then, after the, the Mariners were able to score that power play goal by Bleakley in front, that was kind of very similar to one of the final five minute goals where they just were able to get net from Pleasant's flow, couldn't see anything. And that's still been, even though they dropped five yesterday, that's still been the only way they've been able to score and flow. It's been rebounds, bad changes, so he's just up, up on a one on one with a guy, or it's been net front traffic that's blocked him out. I don't think yesterday, even though you could say just looking at the statue, he didn't play a great game. He did, though, because uh, the, the Royals didn't play good net front defense, they didn't block out the rebounding guy attacking. And that was all the goals for the Mariners. Great net front play, bad line changes on two of them with the Stefanson goal, uh, especially, and the Santos goal, especially. Those are the two bad line changes. And the others were just poor net front defense on the Askew goal, as well as the other um, Santos, or, or the, or the Askew goal, yeah, and the other Santos goal. So um, you got to be able to block out the net front more. If you're the Royals, and they didn't do that as well in this game. But the reason I said at the end of the broadcast, I'm not too tripping or worried about this, is because those are so uncharacteristic, two characteristics for the Royals. I don't see it happening in back-to-back -back days. And I also ain't surprised the Mariners had the best energy in front of the Portland main crowd. It looked up like a packed house on the screen there um, in front of their crowd that you could hear the crowd noise in the background on our headsets. It was really loud. And... Um, no mind in the first home game for the road team in a series, that's when they have their best game. And then it's on the now away team, but still up in the series. Who to one Reading Royals, excuse me, to now step up and get this win to go up three to one this evening. So if the Royals are able to play their game, like or even play similar to how they played in the second, which they didn't play perfect, but they were able to outchance them and get the chance rate up. We're running at 15 to 12 in shots. The only period they outshot them it was 12 to four in the first. But with those four, I even said it. Or I thought two of them because Stefanos Lakers, who was in at that moment, uh, made key saves. That two of the four were actually the scoring chances that Kurt McDonald was talking about. When you get good scoring chances, you just don't finish, and the shot output doesn't always weigh the scoring chances. Um, and then when it comes to the second period, the Reading Royals were able to pressure more, get going, get moving up the ice more, and do a few more things because that's when they were able to score, of course, all of their goals. Where the one by Kenny Halsinger was good net from presence, where Lakis wasn't able to see it. The one by Pritchard was a great job crashing the net. Brad Morrison, a great job on the blast. And then Garrett McFadden was patience to a tee, waiting, 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 getting Lakers off the post a little bit, and then scoring. And then Jeremy Brodeur, Marty Sun came in in the third and shut it down, just like he did in that regular season game on the Friday we drew out Lakers in the first 10 minutes, and just like he did in the first game of the series. So it's definitely interesting they didn't go with him in the first place. I would have to imagine uh, that Giddy's going to go with Bro door in this game because it would be odd if you go back to Lakers after he struggled bunny so much against our running Royals. But the keys um, <clears throat> from this game that allowed this to happen is poor line changes, uncharacteristic defense in front of the Nefer, and I think both of those things are going to improve tonight. I'll save this for my preview of uh, saying the second part of this, but I do think both of those things are going to improve tonight. And it was just an out-characteristic performance for the Royals to have a bad first and not too good of a third. But even with six shots in the third against Brodeur, three of those I counted last night were good saves that were in the slot, good positional shots that were good high-percentage shots. Jeremy Brodeur was able to just make a nice save. And also, he had a snow angel of his own in the third period where the Royals could have scored on that as Lakers had a snow angel where he just laid back and hoped for the best, excuse me, as he laid on his back. So did Jeremy Brodeur do the same in the third. So all those things compounded. I'm not worried about this at all. They're down two to, or they're up two to one. The Royals and the Mariners are down two to one after still winning the first game at home. So if you're able to really come out and supply pressure today and go up three to one, 
that puts you in good footing for the series. Obviously, if it goes the other way, then yeah, we'll be talking about that then because that puts you in a completely different spot for the series and puts you almost in a must win on Saturday coming back into Reading. But those are different perspectives. And I think this game was just one of those oddball ones. It was one that the energy of the home team really put them up and was able to get them over the hump since it was a great second period. We have for a second period from both teams. And then you had a little bit extra energy, obviously, in the offensive off, offensive off zone of Maine. They were able to supply a little bit extra energizer bunny energy there, and that's what kind of got them over the hump in the third period. But everybody have a great day and pleasant day. This has been the latest edition of the Royal Take as we try to take a two-game lead in the series this evening. This has been a recap on the game last evening. I'll be doing a preview to tonight's game later today. Peace out, everybody, and stay safe.